it's extremely hard for cookbooks to land on the New York Times bestseller list if they're not written by an A-list celebrity. Well, with more than 370,000 Instagram followers, Dallas-based blogger Alex Snodgrass's The Defined Dish has become one of them. She joins us now with tips on how to create delicious Whole30 meals from your very own kitchens. I mean, two weeks and you're on the bestseller list. I know. I can't believe it. I mean, that's got to be weird going from a blogger now to a bestselling author. It's pretty surreal. I, yeah. I mean, I have to say I'm very excited. Yeah, that's that is pretty cool. Yes. And it's really cool, too, because a lot of people know this diet. So let's tell them a little bit about the Whole30 diet, just in case people aren't sure about yes, it. Yes, absolutely. So it's a 30-day elimination diet, and you're taking out the things that are normally inflammatory to people. So you take out legumes, grains. You're also taking out sugar. So no alcohol for 30 days. Yep. yep. Hold the wine. Yeah. And then um, amongst some other things, but it's really the things that would normally be inflammatory to you. And then after 30 days, you slowly reintroduce those things and figure out what works for you, for you personally. Right. And so my book is Whole 30-ish, I'd like to say. A lot of the recipes are Whole 30, but it's also for life after Whole 30, reincorporating those helpful ingredients like legumes and dairy here and there if it works for you. Yeah, because if you, if you start doing it, you kind of run out of ideas yes. if you're on the Whole 30 because it's kind of limited, but not yeah. really at the same time. It's no. an interesting balance. Yes, it's fun. I really love to play with the ingredients and bring back the things that we all love, yeah. but using Whole30 ingredients. And I, I love it because I don't feel deprived. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. And that's exactly what my book brings to the table. All right. Well, let's see. Which one are we going to start with first? I think the tiki masala, correct? Yes. Yeah, so oh, so all of these masala. are some favorites already yeah. from the cookbook. I've seen a lot of people make these. This is a Whole30 tikka masala. You can do it in the crock pot or instant pot, depending on what gadget okay. you prefer. And um, instead of using yogurt, I use a little bit of coconut milk. And it's just super simple. You can throw it all in the crock pot. My kids love this one. Um, and at the end of the day, Dinner's pretty much ready. For yeah, you anything go. you can throw in a crock pot, yes. especially if you have kids, that is a winner in, in my household 100%, for sure too. One hundred percent. And then we've got that one. any uh, sausage and shrimp. That yes. looks really good. So this is kind of my take on like a Cajun shrimp boil, but okay. throw it on a sheet pan for a weeknight meal, and it's ready in like twenty minutes. So it's got andouille sausage, lots of lemon, some bay seasoning, and shrimp and potatoes because um, corn is not allowed on Whole30 because right. it's considered a grain. So it's just a super simple sheet pan dish that's just full of flavor and that's definitely a favorite. Do your kids eat that one too? You know, they're a little bit sensitive to the bay seasoning okay. so I'll kind of add that at the end for my husband and I. Okay, then so you I have the little potatoes tricks. and all their stuff you know you can yeah, get Yeah, they, they'll eat all that stuff but I um, hold off on the bay seasoning till the end because it's got a little bit of a kick to it. Got it, okay. But, and then we are finishing up what? Yes, and so this is from my Better Than Takeout chapter. It's like kind of got some Asian inspired dishes and this this is a black pepper chicken. Um, so it's kind of taking it from like the Panda Express, but turning it Whole30 compliant right. using ingredients like coconut aminos, because you can't have soy right. on Whole30 as well. And um, it's been such a favorite. So it's got the celery and the chicken, and it's thickened with an arrowroot rather than cornstarch. Um, and people are loving it. And then, of course, lots and lots of black pepper. And you can smell, oh, yeah. smell it right here. It's early, but it still sounds delicious. <laughs> so this is another super simple one that um, everyone's loving right so now. Is this stuff that you just came up with while you were doing the diet yourself? Because it's, again, like there's a lot of recipes in this book. Yes. You know, for me, the first time I did a Whole30, it was like the first week when you're eating, you know, grilled chicken and broccoli, that's okay. But week two, I love food too much. I was right. like, okay, I need to find a way to eat the foods that I love, but keep it all in the realm of Whole30. And so if I was craving gumbo, I'd be like, I'm going to get as close to the real gumbo as I can while using Whole30 ingredients. So I have a lot of riffs on all my favorite foods. I'm from the South, so there's a lot of Southern inspired dishes and I just feel like, you know, you'll never know that you're eating Whole30 yeah, if you I, eat this way. And I'm not a very good cook or a frequent cook, so it's great to have a book to go to that yes. helps mimic those dishes that we Absolutely. love. Absolutely, there's out even a chicken fried steak with gravy in there, which oh, really? everyone's loving. Yes, I make the gravy from like a cauliflower base, so oh. you're eating your vegetables and you wouldn't even know it. Wow. <laughs> what's, what's the one tip you can give people if they're starting to go on this diet to be successful? You know, I think, you know, sitting down on Sunday and really planning out your week of like, okay, how do I make this a little bit easier for me? Because yeah. it is hard to eat out. And if you're somebody that doesn't cook every night of the week, that can be a little bit challenging. So keep it real simple. You know, start with like a sheet pan and crock pot dish and really, um, you know, Start with those as your baseline, and then you'll get more comfortable in the kitchen. You'll get more comfortable with the ingredients, and they'll become pantry staples to you. That's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. I'm going to try the uh, the tiki masala because uh, Felicia's going to take over for us. But we got your information <laughs> for your website and Instagram right there. Uh, the defined dish, and you can find Alex also, of course, on Instagram and get all the information about our cookbook and where to buy it as well. Thanks so much for being here today. Of course, Appreciate thank it. Thank you.